Hello and welcome. We are at the Morningstar Investment Conference in Milan and I'm sitting with Stefan Isaacs, Fixed Income Fund Manager for m g Investments. Good morning, Stefan, and thank you. Good to be here. Uh, so, 2015 has been a challenging period for bond investors. Deflation, Greece, still very low interest rates. Where do you find value in the Fixed Income universe today? You're right, it has been, a, has been a challenging year for fixed income. I guess all risk assets have had to face concerns about a slowdown of global growth. We've had to face the uncertainty around central bank policy. Uh, we've had, as you mentioned, Greece and some uncertainties around, around that at the start of the year. And that generally has kept, uh, to our mind, bond yields at relatively low levels where we don't see a great deal of value, whether that's in the US the UK or in Europe, um, where we do see greater value and where you have seen a repricing has been in corporate bonds. So corporate bond spreads have underperformed this year on the back of some of those concerns. Um, they've generally moved higher, whether that's been in high yield or in investment grade. And so we've seen an opportunity to be adding to corporate bond risk, generally to be buying longer dated US corporate bonds, to be buying some European corporate bonds as well, as those spreads have repriced and as curves have generally steepened up. Okay, and uh, what are the main risks for bond investors today? I suppose the biggest challenges for a bond investor at the moment is the behavior of central banks and how they're likely to influence uh, government bond yields. What is the Fed likely to do? How quickly will it raise rates if in fact it does raise rates later this year or in 2016? How will the ECB behave? Will they provide more accommodation? So there is quite a lot of uncertainty and we are in fairly unprecedented times especially with government bond yields at or relatively low, uh, low near record low levels, it does present a challenge to, to fixed income investors. So we have to think about that allocation to uh, duration to interest rate risk, we have to think about protecting capital, potentially in a, in a rising interest rate environment, and look for other opportunities where maybe um, the market will benefit from rising interest rates. Talking about uh, central banks, uh, what is your sentiment on the next Federal Reserve's meeting on December? Um, and what are the possible consequences for European markets? It's always difficult to predict how central banks will behave, especially ahead of time, given that they themselves, especially the Fed, have said they'll be very data dependent. I think that they want to buy themselves as much time ahead of their meeting in December before deciding on the appropriate response. Our view for some time, though, has been that the Fed is, is behind the curve, that unemployment is near full, un full employment in the US, that that's likely to lead in the medium term to some wage inflationary pressures, and as such, the Fed should be thinking about normalizing policy. That's probably what they will look to do, whether it's in December or, or early next year. Um, I think they'll do it in a very gradual manner. Mm. So the effect, the spillover shouldn't be hugely negative in our opinion. In fact, you could infer that it's, uh, it's, it's a good thing. It states that there is confidence in the economic recovery. In terms of the um, implications for European markets, I suppose one of the biggest impacts will be the relationship between the euro and the dollar. And if we continue to see the ECB trying to depress the euro currency, whilst the Fed are in a high, have a hiking bias, that should see euro dollar uh, underperform, and as a consequence, you might actually start to see some inflation in in the eurozone, which is entirely what what the ECB want to achieve. Thanks a lot, Stefan. My pleasure. Good to be here. For Morning, sir, Valerio Baselli. Thanks for watching.